Over one year ago, my game Zardus Maze hit the web. It's a game with a simple objective. Cut down some giant plants and make it to the goal. But while the objective itself is simple to say, there's a lot working against you. The game leans more towards the difficult side of things, and players must keep their wits about them as they listen, dodge, and make their way safely through the darkness. But even with the game being as hard as it is, there's still some people out there that want to be punished, to rise above the impossible. And quite frankly, at least in my opinion, that's what one player did. This is the story of Nephrite, and how one player overcame a game mode that in my opinion, was probably impossible. I hope you enjoy. So whether you're an OG Zardy stan, or learned of his existence from his finger-breaking mods in Friday Night Funkin', intense challenges sort of go hand-in-hand -hand with this sinister scarecrow. If you can survive foolhardy and bushwhack, you have some pretty swift fingers. But take that sense of challenge into a 3D world, and there's a lot more peril lurking around. So, for those who don't know, Zardy's Maze gameplay can be summed up as the following. You have a flashlight and an axe most of the time, and you have to head into a corn maze during the night. Once you are within, a wide variety of spooky scarecrows begin hunting you down. Now, even though you are in a maze, if you were getting chased by a killer scarecrow, you'd probably not follow the maze exactly. That's what sort of makes Zardy's Maze unique. You can go into the corn and cut across passages anytime you want. In fact, this mechanic is what saves you most of the time. You can move much faster on the paths, but you can dodge enemies by cutting across the corn. In most normal instances, other than Cable Crow, Root, and Drought, the enemies pursuing you will have to walk or run around. But the corn is dangerous, and if you wait in there too long, Zardy will come after you. So the challenge for the player is to learn from death what will help them in the next run. Once the player has an understanding of how the enemies work, they then know how to dodge them when they come for them. But the thing is, the enemies become more difficult as time goes on, and as the player progresses. Thus, the hardest part of any match is when the goal is open, and the win condition is in sight. After the player eliminates all the giant flower vines in the maze, this blue hole in the ground begins to shine brightly, and the player must make it into this hole to clear the game. Zardy's Maze offers a basic story mode, currently seven challenges that must be cleared in order, and the ability for a player to fully customize a challenge to their liking. So, of course, when people are faced with a custom challenge menu, what do you think the first thing they do is? If you guess cranked everything up to max, you're right. We wanted to give people control over the maze experience, and I always loved how Five Nights at Freddy's allowed total customization. Ultimate Custom Night was insane to watch, especially on 50-20 mode. Watching Remory, DJ Sturf, and Daco clear this insane mode was monumental. Scott Cawthon himself even thought it was impossible. So of course, I thought, what the heck? Why not let people push this game to its limits? And thus, what the community dubbed as true foolhardy was created. So Friday Night Funkin' fans know the song Foolhardy as Zardy's debut song, but it's actually derived from one of the hardest achievements in the game, which is called Foolhardy. To get this Steam achievement, the player must clear one vine out of five, with every character set to the max spawn amount and the max difficulty. The maze must be on the largest size, and the seed for the maze must be on random. They have to cut one vine down and exit the maze without dying to get the achievement. But as most players figured out, this was only a taste of a larger, hidden challenge. And quite honestly, I didn't even think anyone would ever beat it. Now, I won't go into the secrets or lore of Zardy's Maze, but I did include some sort of prize for clearing this absurd challenge, just on the off chance that someone defied mortality and rose up as a gamer god. The challenge mode for the game didn't launch until four months after the base game came out, but all of this was already done ahead of time. When we built the game, we removed all references to it, but then restored it when the challenge mode debuted. However, it wasn't long until modders began working their magic, and a god mode was developed for the game. And that's when True Foolhardy's existence was found out, because someone cleared the max mode while invincible. But 10,000 IQ Me anticipated this, and locked lots of the game's most sought after secrets behind doors that I only had the keys to. Once someone proved their accomplishment, the door would unlock. So players found the True Foolhardy door, but now they understood the challenge before them. And lots of notable players took up the reins to clear this absurd mode. Players like Super Maya, Secret Sauce, and others tried their best to beat this brutal challenge, and months would pass. But I'd keep my watchful eye, and I noticed that one player called Nephrite was getting farther and farther into the challenge. And something I thought was impossible started to look more and more possible with each video I'd see. On launch, I pretty much came to terms that no one may ever beat this or even know it existed. Zardy's Maze was a small game with a small player base, and regardless if someone rose to the challenge or not, I was happy with what was made. But 235 days later, after the challenge mode update, the deed had been done. The first legitimate true foolhardy run had been completed, and that's insane. 
Now, I'll talk about how this player did this in a moment, but the excitement in the community for this accomplishment was honestly one of the coolest things ever. And watching players inch closer and closer to clearing something I thought was unbeatable was crazy. Of course, I put the work in for the reward, just in case someone ever did decide to do it though. And I kind of threw in a little surprise for this player to stand the test of time, as the world of Zardi grows over the years to come. So how did Nephrite do the impossible? Well, it certainly wasn't quick. They spent nearly 100 hours in the game, and I can imagine a large chunk of that was grinding out this challenge over and over again. 100 hours could be 25 days of 4 hour play sessions. It's hard to tell. But when you're dying every 1-2 to two minutes, clicking that restart button becomes a very common occurrence. This true foolhardy mode had 4 pumpkin jacks, 4 cable crows, 4 brutes, 4 rattlers, oh my god, Zardi, Drought, Pumpkin Crawlers, and Corn Stalkers. And all these enemies start on their hardest difficulty setting, which is equivalent to the player having already cut down all the vines and only needing to enter the goal. Increased difficulty means different things for each character too. Zardi appears more frequently, moves faster, and takes longer to eliminate with a flashlight. Pumpkin Jacks never stop running, and to make things worse, Pumpkin Jacks continue to spawn every time a vine is cut down. So a total of 9 Pumpkin Jacks will be in the maze at one point. Cable Crows move differently with increased difficulty. They start off moving randomly at level 1, and then pursue the player as difficulty increases to 2. As they continue to increase, they then learn how to diagonally cross post sections instead of moving along the 90 degree angles. They also learn how to backtrack, which allows them to camp a player's position. Rattlers, once awakened, never stop hunting the player, and they move quite fast at difficulty level 4. Drought will intercept the player and predict their movement, both obscuring their vision and teleporting them if they are hit. The Brutes will circle a vine really quickly and defend it in unison with other Brutes. With all this working in tandem, one can simply not walk up to a vine and cut it without dying a horrible death. One benefit players did have for this run was that although the maze was randomly generated, the vine locations never changed. Only the paths to get to them changed, and the player could choose one of three gates to enter the maze. Although, after three vine kills, the maze would close off. After running this challenge over and over again, this is the route that Nephrite determined was the best. So let's talk about what this looks like. At the start of the game, they go for the bottom left vine. They utilize the west gate for this. This vine is chosen, despite it being one of the four vines guarded by a rattler, because it's an outlier in terms of pathing when it comes to drawing closer and closer to the maze's center. If this vine was done at a later point in the run, lots of enemies will be pursuing the player, and it would make backtracking to the maze's central goal very difficult. Once Nephrite reaches this vine, they begin to do some prepping. Brutes are able to sense a player's presence, and will teleport to the vine the player is near after a set amount of time. And given how dangerous Brutes are when coming from all sides, a stacking technique is used with a flashlight to get them all to the same spot. Of course, stopping it all means both Zardi, Drought, and the Cable Crows will be coming to your position. So in between stacking, Zardi needs to be eliminated. Nephrite then runs in and cuts down the vine while half of the Brutes are stacked to one side. Although a Pumpkin Crawler grabs a player, they are able to make it out of the maze and that exit closes up. This will be the last time the player can rest though, because the next time they enter the maze, they are going for four giant vine flowers at once. While they are outside, they are completely safe. So they recharge their flashlight and then head to the east gate. Nephrite constantly flickers the flashlight so they can conserve battery power needed to banish Zardi. But this is also done so that pumpkin crawlers can be spotted and avoided. If a crawler grabs Nephrite, it will summon every pumpkin jack in the maze to their location, which would be very, very bad. Jumping is used to spot oncoming cable crows, see where the giant vines are at, and to see nearby passages that can be accessed by passing through the corn. Constant jumping reduces the risk of stepping on an unseen pumpkin crawler too. Once at the second vine, the brute stacking process begins. But the clock is ticking because both Zardi and a Rattler are zeroing in on the player's position. Brutes stacked, Zardi banished, and the vine is cut. Brutes are flashed for a split second to stop their charge, and now the true test begins. The player must now head north to vine 3, as the maze begins to close off. Along the way, drought can be avoided just like pumpkin jacks by entering the corn. Nephrite ends up getting spotted by a pumpkin jack and dives into the corn unknowingly hitting drought after emerging on the other side. But despite this teleporting setback, the player inches closer and closer to the next vine. 
Now, the maze is completely closed off, and Cable Crow has become a lot more dangerous due to vision being obscured. The third vine is cut, and the player looks to the ceiling to avoid oncoming Cable Crows. Sound is so important because it lets Nefrite know when Rattlers and other foes are nearby. Tension is really high upon arriving at the fourth vine. You have to be patient to get the brutes lined up, but the shuffling of Rattlers approaching in the distance really puts pressure on the situation. With the fourth vine cut, now Nephrite returns to the edge of the maze on the way to the fifth and final vine. I think this is super clever because it forces the Rattlers, who are pursuing the player, to take paths leading to the edge of the maze. This essentially makes it less likely that a Rattler will be encountered when heading to the center of the maze for finishing the run. Upon reaching the fifth vine, Nephrite waits for Zari to spawn to clear him out. But with the Rattlers approaching quickly, the players rush through the clearing in a risky move to dodge the horde of Rattlers funneling in. The fifth vine is cut, the Brute is stunned, and a frantic sprint for the maze center begins. Keep in mind Nephrite makes this look easy. It is certainly not. Every action is engraved in them from doing this over and over again. Death upon countless death, and all that hard work paid off. Cable Crows play a major threat at this point, as the corn is needed to get to the maze center as fast as possible. Looking up while on the corn lets a player sidestep Cable Crow attacks, and a heart-pounding moment of extreme patience takes place as everything in the maze creeps in on Nephrite. Zardi appears in front of Nephrite at the last moment, and I would have literally died if that ended the run. But the player nopes the heck out of there and banishes Straw Daddy. With the Brutes now stunned, Nephrite knows he can walk in and keep the Brutes pinned down while making it to the goal, and the once unbeatable challenge becomes a thing of the past. The deed is done, and the challenge is now finally complete. I know they worked very, very hard for this moment, and now with their code, they got to be the first person to unlock the secret that quite possibly could have been hidden forever. Absolutely ridiculous gameplay. This footage makes this look easy when in actuality, it's teetering on the edge of insanity. So if you enjoyed this, please stop whatever you're doing right now. Click the video link on screen and give Nephrite a hearty congrats in the comment section of their video. I'd greatly appreciate it. And until next time, cheers.